If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 34. And uh, while you're turning there, uh, we remind you that the Youth Fellowship is going to be at our house this Saturday. And pray the weather will be good for that. And uh, we're going to do some things uh, uh, for the children. And it's open for the young and the young at heart and everybody in between. So um, if you can, come and we pray the Lord would, um, would bless it. Uh, Ezekiel 34, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Ezekiel 34, beginning in the, verse, the first verse. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flock? Ye that eat, and ye, uh, and ye, ye eat the fat, and ye clothe ye with the wool, you kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which is lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon uh, every high hill, yea, the flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word. I, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, and they, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith, saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day, that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek the, the so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in, in the cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and will cause them to lay da lie down, saith the Lord. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and strengthen that which was sick. I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Yeah. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for another opportunity to be in your house. God, we thank you for your people here at Dover. Lord, may we continue to strive to be in your will, and Lord, that we would be a group, a church that would be pleasing to you, Lord, that uh, we wouldn't be set on the outside, that we'd be in your perfect will. God, help us to understand your word this morning, and we'd be faithful to praise you for it, for it's in Christ's name we do ask. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching uh, on God's message to the lost. Now, um, 
I know it was quite a long reading, but I felt like it was necessary because there's really two groups here. There's the lost and there's bad shepherds. Now, there are great, a great, great deal of, blood, of bad shepherds today that will tell you most anything to attract you to them. Right. Now, I don't even, well, I'll say nine-tenths nine of them are not even shepherds themselves. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Yeah. And they are out there to sell a bill of goods. They're out there to attract people to themselves and they could care less about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I can't think of his name. He's the, the one we could always say is Benny Hinn, but I think he's dead now. And, but there's a false prophet out there, and he said a couple of weeks ago, it didn't matter what you did, and we were all God's children, and nothing further could be from the truth. Uh, but that's the theology of the day. And we see that that's always been a case even for God's people. And here the Lord begins to rebuke the shepherds. Now, uh, Jared, you and I have an extra, an extra uh, responsibility opposed to uh, other people in this assembly. Because, listen, we've been entrusted with the gospel and the word of God. And further than that, you pastored a church, I pastored a couple. And you know what? We'll give an accounting for that one day and how we did our job. And the shepherds of Israel were no different. God had them accountable. Now, I will point out to you in the days of Ezekiel that they were no longer a people because of their rebellion against God. And uh, they were scattered abroad. Uh, the Bible says in the first verse there, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, now, any time the word of the Lord comes unto you, and I believe it still does, I believe that he can make his scripture brighter to you and, uh, and, and give you a new message from it all the time because the Bible says of itself, it's a living word. And uh, we need to be digging. We need to be looking. And, and so when the word of the Lord does come, when you have one of these instances in your life when he shows up and he speaks to you, listen. Listen to what he says. Listen to how he manifests himself to you and what he is conveying to you. And so he says, Son of man, prophesy or preach against the shepherds of Israel. Now that was a tall bill to fill because I tell you what, it's about like the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages. If you didn't go along with them, they snuffed you out. That was, uh, that was their mode of action. And so sometimes the Lord God's going to put you in a situation where you have to make a choice. Are you going to stand true or are you going to give in? Uh, Brother Jared showed us a little a clip in a little short video of a mess going on in Washington and uh, uh, in Washington State. And listen, there was uh, one of them sodomites got up in the preacher's face and kissed him. You know, that's where we're at today. The gospel is hated. That's where we're at. So we find that Ezekiel was called to do something very similar that we may be called to do in short order. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds. Now, uh, we, we see woe like that a, a whole lot in the Bible, and uh, we kind of we kind of ignore it, but I think if we would look at the meaning of woe, we would see the judgment that's coming. Woe means misery. Ro, uh, woe means desolation. Uh, woe means despair. He was sending them hard times because of their actions. You know, a lot of times I think uh, my, uh, what I'm living is the results of my own actions. Uh, and I believe the, the Bible teaches that. And so be careful what you do. Verse 3, you eat the fat, and that was the portion uh, of the sacrifice, and you clothe and, and you clothed ye with the wool. And you know, this part wasn't bad. This was their wages. That's how the Levites 
parents were uh, supposed to live. And they didn't even get an inheritance. And so this part wasn't wrong, but they were taking in the wages and not delivering the goods. You know what? Uh, we live in a day and age where the goods are no longer cherished, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, relieve me from the duty of delivering the goods. Now, what kind of pastor would I be if y'all paid me and I came in here and I never told you anything but how good you are? And that's about the day that Israel was living, which I don't even know that they were getting how good you are. I don't know that they were getting anything. And, and, and so we find that Israel certainly can be likened unto the church, they got their wages, the end of verse 3, but ye feed not the flock. Now, let me say this, it's an aside, and it's not in the message, but I just want you to think about it. You gotta, you gotta feed an animal all it needs. Uh, that horse that we look after, um, and we kind of got attached to it now, uh, he can't go just on hay alone. He needs some grain, too. And he can't go grain alone or he'd make him sick. And, and in addition to that, uh, Desa brought him down a salt block to lick on. See, he needed all aspects, and we need a diet of all aspects of the Word of God. But now, what I found in the shrinking years of my ministry is people don't want it. About all they want is the fluff. They don't want to get down into the Word of God. They don't want to get deep into what it says because what will happen then is that they'll become responsible when they understand the truth of this book. And that was his situation. Verse 4, the, the diseased have you not strengthened? And so he, he begins to tell them what they were doing wrong. The diseased have you not strengthened? In other words, when you find a church member or you find a friend, and listen, we've all had the same disease, have we not? We were born into unrighteousness. We were born against God in every way. We were born diseased, and he saved us. Now, on the flip side of that, I've seen some pretty sick Christians, haven't you? I've seen, uh, I've seen uh, people you couldn't, uh, that, that, that you couldn't have hard to identify them from the world. Uh, in nursing, I've seen people that all we could to get nourishment in them, we'd get a little water and a straw, and put the straw in their mouth and release our finger and a few drops would run in their mouth. See, there's Christians out there that weak, is there not? And you know what? They choke on the doctrine of election, but what we need to give them is some encouragement and say, hey, God cares about you. God's interested in you. And instead of beating them down, encourage them. And we find that apparently Israel in this day was just cutting them off and, and throwing them away and had no concern about the diseased. Neither have you healed them what was sick Neither have you bound up which was broken. Now, uh, then sheep would get out there and, and, and not pay attention. Sheep are not intelligent animals. When we were called sheep, listen, that was no compliment. That was, that was not the Lord Jesus bragging on us. It was showing that we were ignorant, and by ourselves, we would get into a lot of trouble really, really quick. That was what sheep were about. They get out there in the highways and hedges and between rocks and they break their leg. And you know what? If, if the shepherd didn't come, they'd lay there and die. Right. And apparently in Ezekiel's day, there was a lot of Jew people just laying around and dying because there was no concern for them. And not just dying physically, dying spiritually. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think that's where we're at today in the modern day, in the church age. Listen, people don't care much about preaching of the Word of God. Uh, and you know, this is the thing. And, and I know and understand that sometimes maybe I harp on the same thing all the time. But let me do I, I I do it for your betterment. I do it for your good. Because you need something to eat. You need something that you can 
that you can dwell on. Verse 5. And they, meaning the sheep, were scattered because there is no shepherd. Now, I don't understand some of these churches around. I know one down in Mississippi that hadn't had a pastor in probably 12 or 15 years. You know what? They can do what they want to and say what they want to say. They're in danger or they're already dead. Yeah. Just going through the motion. Uh, listen, uh, a group cannot live without a shepherd. And you know what? I won't go too deep, but the group I'm speaking of, they think they're on, their own shepherd. But the Bible doesn't teach that. Not in the least. They need a shepherd. And, and so we find these people, these priests, these Jewish priests that were given that job was not doing that job. And they were scattered be uh, abroad because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field, and they were scattered. Now, I want you to see that they were very vulnerable to the predators. And we are too. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think that sometimes it would be so much easier to go into a packed church building and just blend in? Mm. Uh, a lot of people would like that, would they not? A lot of people would enjoy that. And uh, but let me tell you, there's wolves there. There, there there's problems there. And uh, I'd much rather sit with a few people and and, and and feast on the word of God than than take something fake. And so the predators were there. They could became meat to them, and they scattered them. Verse 6, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill, yet the flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Now, listen, we need to understand and know that when people are in trouble, we need to call and say, hey, how you doing? We're missing you at church. Uh, that's seeking and looking for their benefit. That is trying to keep them straight and secure in a very, very hard day. And we need that. Listen, we don't know how, how close we are for uh, things to get worse, do we? Donald Trump's elected ain't going to help us. May help us a little bit. But listen, this country's on a nose dive. Y'all know that steep hill in front of my house? I start down it in my mower. It's no stopping. We're, we're going to the bottom. Very same thing with this country. It's going to the bottom. And so what are we going to do then? You know what? I think for God's people, the gospel will become more precious. And the lost people will say, I don't think there was anything to it anyway. That, that, that'd, be the, that'd be the two stats. So in Ezekiel's day, there was these people, there was these individuals that didn't do their job. And because of that, the sheep wandered. Verse 7, Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, the Almighty, the never-ending God, the, ne the always-has-been God, as I live, saith the Lord, surely because my flock become a prey, and my flock became me to every beast all on the field, uh, to every beast of the field. Now let me say this, the beasts are out there. You, you know, in the end-time prophecies, and it talks about the great beast. That's no accident. That, that's exactly what he is. Um, the beast is out there. And he's seeking, you know, what they look for in devouring the weakest that's among the flock. Yeah, yeah. Because they can take it. Yeah. Uh, and so what we need to do is begin to strengthen up ourselves in the last day and understand and know hey, the only way that we'll remain faithful is being strong. And how are, how does anybody become strong? Jared has lost more weight than I, I, I've ever seen him. And how did he become like that? He lifted weights. 
And he, you know, the whole thing, and I, I know about this, and I'm not saying that I do it, but I know about this, the way that you build your muscles is repetition. And the way that you're going to build your strength for this, the last day, is repetition. Get in the Word of God, study the Word of God, and in the morning, get in the Word of God, and study the Word of God, and, and when you have the adversary come your way and question, you know, well, the Bible says for baptism for the repentance of sin, and you know what? The Bible does say that. You better know what it means. And, and, and so we find then, uh, as the people of God, that we have to be ready for this. And I want you to see everybody that the pastor and the priest were the ones held accountable. In verse 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. What a what a wonderful promise from the Almighty. You know what? Uh, his sheep he will find. He knows them. He knows their cry. He knows their call. He knows where they're at. And he'll go to them and he'll seek them out. That's what a wonderful comfort in the chaos that we live in today is that he is out there. And he's seeking. You know what? I fully believe God's still saving, or I think we'd be out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know where it's happening, but I believe he is. I believe he's still, he's convicting people and saying, hey, you're lost and on your way to a devil's hell. You need some. Listen, this time is running short. Trust him now. I believe he's, I believe he's still saying that. And I believe if he wasn't, we'd be gone. Now, see, the thing about particular redemption, and we say we believe it, right? One day it will run out. It has to, right? And then we'll be home. Then we'll be home. And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that it should be an exciting, wonderful thing that we have somebody looking and seeking after us even when we don't deserve it, even when uh, we're mostly against him, he's still there. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he, uh, that he is among his sheep, that, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep. Now, now did you get that? Uh, he, he was among the sheep. Now, I personally believe this is in a, a referral to Jesus Christ because I don't think God the Father has been here because he's, he's too holy and righteous. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has been here, right. and the Holy Ghost has been here. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that's who, you know what, what a wonderful thing on the cross of Calvary when he said, It is finished! It was done. The particular redemption for all that belong to him, it was finished. Remember his prayer? I pray not for the world, but I pray for those that thou hast given me. Right. So he, he was you know what? He wasn't interested in the world. He was interested in his sheep, his flock, those that belonged to him. And, and so we find here for those individuals, us blessed individuals, the one that out of God's mercy and grace he has saved us, this promise is to us. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they had been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Yes. Now, I want you to see with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, Holy Spirit, looking at, looking for us, there's no way we can be lost. In other words, we're not beyond his finding out. Now, uh, you know, uh, we need to understand and know in this dark, dark day that we live, that God is still on the throne. He's not upset. He's not wringing his hands. 
You know, I, I would to God that little six block area they got blocked off up there in Washington State that God would do like he did to uh, Cora and his band and just open up and, and swallow them. But that's not, you know what? That's not in my mind's eye to say. That belongs to God. Yeah. You know what? Who knows? By the mercy and yeah. the grace of God, there might be any left in that bunch. Yeah. And, and, and so we, we as the Lord's people, instead of being judgmental, we ought to be given mercy and grace and, and, and very glad that the shepherd came to us in a dark, dark day. Yeah. Verse 13, I will bring them out from the people. Now I want you to, if you underline or highlight uh, or at least put it in your memory, and I will bring them out from the people. That is what salvation happens. He says, I'm going to seek you out in a dark, dark day, and when you're sold out, I will bring them out. We have no business with this world. We have no, we ought to have no interest in this world, but listen, I know each and every one of us do, but when we began to be focused on spiritual things, we should have no interest. He brought us out. He didn't, he didn't save us to live like the rest of the world. He didn't. He brought us out. He says, I'm going to take them out for a people for my name's sake. Exactly what he said in the New Testament, speaking of the Gentiles, speaking of us. Yeah. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture. Now he begins to promise the meal, the, the food that we're going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ought to be enjoying it now. Listen, uh, you ever had a food that you didn't like? Uh, I, I do not like beets. They stink to me. Uh, they're hard. They're, I just don't like them. They smell like dirt. They taste like dirt to me. And, uh, but you know what? I do know this. It's good for you. It's good for you. And if I can... Well, if I'm a little anemic, if I can swallow one down, if I'm, and I literally have to make it go down, mm -hmm. I know it's good for me. Mm -hmm. And so we find really two types of foods, those that taste good and are good for you, and those that taste bad and good for you. That's the only thing the shepherd's going to... Now, uh, the world's going to ask you that uh, is going to offer you the things that taste good and you can live like a dog and you can be a sodomite and God loves everybody. But you know what? That food will poison your mind. It will make you cold and hard. In fact, it will make you obtrusive to the Word of God. It will make you hate the Word of God. And, and so we find that as the Lord's people, He's spreading a banquet before us, and, and it's everything that we need. It's everything we need to feast on, uh, to feast on. Now, I don't have any problem with commentaries, and some of them help me a little bit, but you know what I want? I want this right here. This is the food that I need. You know what? Charles Haddon Spurgeon had some good ideas, but you know what? He's a man just like me, and he and, and all the rest of them with me, they're fine, and I'll read about their ideas, but you know what? Don't take it for gospel truth. Yeah. It's right. not. And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, uh, good measure of where you're at, is what you're hungry for, what you enjoy eating on. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel, the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be, and they shall lie, they shall lie in a good fold, they shall lie in a good fold. You know where you need to be? You need to be in a good church. That's a good fold, that's a protected place, that's that, and, and you know what? I can't help to, to believe this. When you have thousands, hundreds, or thousands of people there, I can't believe that it's a good, uh, a good place to be.
Because you know what? Flocks are small. They really are. They're not that big. And also you would have division, which you know that right. Uh, the only other church I ever pastored that building down on South Road in Cades. I noticed another group just took it up, and I would heard of the group. They're, they're Pentecostals, really what they are. They wouldn't tell you that, but they are. And uh, they took that little building. But you know what they did? They had a big building downtown in the old part of Cades, but they split off. See, people don't get along like that, do they? And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that we ought to be glad that we're being well fed and that we have a place that we can come together as a people. He's promised to feed us. I will, verse 15, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. Notice this. I will seek that which was lost. Now, uh, the Lord God promises that, and uh, I'm committed to it too. And Jared, I know you are too. Part of the seeking, the Savior went seeking. And you know what? I don't know what an elect looks like. They may be brown, black, yellow, white. I don't know what their situation is. But I know this, if I preach the gospel, yeah. God, will, God will bless it. I just gotta keep. I just gotta keep looking. I, I just gotta keep preaching. You know, sometimes it gets quite discouraging when you don't see anything. Well, you know what? A long time ago, and I pick it back up, but a long time ago, I left that in the hands of the Almighty. See, I don't have to see people coming in. I don't have to see people doing cartwheels. All I'm responsible for is preaching the gospel. And, 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 and when, I, when I'm done and I'm laid down and I'm out in the lot beside the church, that's all I, that's for what I'll commit back to the Almighty. I will seek them which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. Now be very, very careful, church, that we don't drive people away. Just because, you know what? Some people's come in if we're not careful just because uh, they don't do everything like we do and God and I, like, you know, give them time. Give them time to mature in the things of God. Listen, we didn't arrive what where we're at the first day the Lord saved us. Give them time. You know what they are? They're little lambs. Uh, we raise a lot of goats in our life. And you know what? You start them out on the bottle. Yeah. They're not ready for grain. And you know what? If you give it to them, they'll kill, they'll kill it. Yeah. And, and, and so we find very frequently the Lord's church becomes like Israel was. And, and, and we're feeding them the hard stuff first. God promises to take time. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. I will bind up that which was broken. Isn't it a wonderful thing, a wonderful promise? When it comes your way, you're broken down from sin. You're broken down from the way the world's treated you. And he comes by and says, you're mine. And he, he binds up that wound and says, it's going to be well. Amen. Remember, Remember the good Samaritan? That's exactly what he did, was it not? And listen, there was a what the world would have thought a distinction between them. Right. A Samaritan was only a half-breed. But you know what? He showed love in that, did he not? And you know what? That, that Jew that fell among thieves was unconscious. You don't find documented in the scripture, help me, help me. And you know why? He was too near gone. And the Samaritan came to him. Uh, I told a Pentecostal woman over in West Tennessee that one, and she went and got a Bible and started digging. <laughs> she, she didn't believe me. Oh, yeah, he bought it. I said, no, he didn't. I said, the scripture don't say he did. And you're right. <laughs> I was like, yes, ma'am. Uh, and so we find then that... Um, he comes to us. Right. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Whether we're lost, he'll come to us. Whether we don't know him, he'll come to us. Or if we've just been through another day and beat down, 
to nothing, he will come to us. Right. You know, I don't know the name of the song, but uh, some of the words is, uh, once again, I faced Satan this morning. And I battled, it, I battled him all the day long. But in the evening, God sent reinforcements. <laughs> Isn't it a wonderful thing when those reinforcements come? It may come in a form of a preacher. It may come in form of a song. Or it may just come in, a, uh, in the form of a, a phone call and say, You know what, Larry? I've been praying for you today. I don't know why, but the Lord led me to pray for you. <laughs> and that was it. And I was on a missionary trip one time. Can't remember which one now. And uh, I think it was when we were in Mexico. And uh, me and Bird and some of the kids was going up this big steep hill. And he had this massive truck. And then he had a, that, that trailer that the church, this church bought him, 20-foot trailer. It was behind us. And we was going straight up a mountain. And the thing died. And we started going back. <laughs> and, uh, but Bert handled it and we got going again. And so I uh, got back from my mission trip. And Mama said, well, how did he go? I said, most of it was good. And she said, well, the Lord led me to pray for you on Thursday. <laughs> and I said, well, that was the day I needed it. And uh, so you see, uh, she sent reinforcements. Right. And, and, and when we get in a situation like that, you know what you need? Stop everything that you're doing and just get down and you pray for that person right then and right there because uh, uh, it, 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 it's a true deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to say one more thing we'll be close. Uh, I know Ron and Junior and uh, uh, Diane will remember this. Y'all remember Lovey Holland over at the nursing home? Little Pentecostal woman. And uh, I know one time she uh, told Diane, I fought the devil all day long. <laughs> and you know what? A lot more than back then, I see that. Uh, I see that. Uh, Lovey was probably telling the truth as best she could. Uh, but he gives us reinforcements, don't he? Yeah. He, bring, he brings things our way in, in so many different forms, and all we can do is just stand there amazed. And so we find that the Lord God made great promise. I will destroy the fat and the strong. That means our enemies, false priests, people selling us a bill of goods. I will destroy the fat and the strong. And I will feed them with judgment. So sometimes the, uh, the pickings may be small, but I know it's exactly what we need. Vitamins. Yes, sir, it is full of vitamins. <laughs> exactly what we need. Amen. Are you saved this morning? You know, it all comes down to this, and uh, not a lot of sovereign grace preachers do this, but I point you to Christ. If you're lost, that's your only answer. And, and I'll tell you, uh, the wooing of the Holy Ghost is everything. Mm -hmm. Him manifesting the only person that can make you understand your loss is the Holy Ghost. I can't do it. Nobody else can do it, but the Holy Ghost can say you're lost and you need a Savior. Right. If that's happened this morning, Amen. I would advise you uh, to trust Him. Amen.